We haven't gotten to talk to you since uh, the news, but how are you feeling about um, having more responsibility as a general manager and embracing that new role within this franchise? Yeah, I'm excited about it. I've been preparing for this ever since I took a front office job with New Orleans in 2013. And uh, great opportunity, have a great roster, a great coach, so I'm raring to go. What are the draft preparations like for you right now? Just trying to get to know all the prospects that we'd be interested in our, in our wheelhouse, um, dissecting them, getting background information, getting the physicals, um, having uh, discourse in our group on a daily basis. Pretty much that's the, that's the daily routine. In your eyes, what's the biggest need for this team that you guys can address in the draft? Yeah, the, uh, we, ju we just need to get um, guys that know how to play and are plus defenders. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, that's, a, that's a big thing. I think Jamal and Nicola. Oh, yeah. And might do well with those kind of guys. When Josh gave you the call that, that you were going to be elevated, what kind of emotions ran through your mind, or what did you feel at that time? Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew what was on the horizon with Tim leaving, and uh, of course you're excited, but ready to get to work. We have a job to do here, and uh, you know, I think I acknowledge it for a second, but try to get my head down and get to work. Yeah. You mentioned your your playing experience and how how crucial that'll be. How much do you think that'll help you out as you continue on? Yeah, I think it's really important. Um, I, I know what the guys have gone through in the locker room. I've played uh, several different roles in the NBA, and uh, I think uh, I know what it takes to, to be a good team. And you've been in the draft rooms multiple times, but now you're the guy that, that you know has that final say. What's what's that feel like for you? That's a good. It's a big responsibility. I'm looking forward to. You know, oftentimes, you know, uh, you like somebody, and maybe the final decision maker goes another way. So it'll be. Pretty cool to uh, be able to make the call and, and see how it goes. Calvin, some GMs like to remove themselves from the players as, as people just because it could be difficult to, to trade people you know personally. What is your philosophy on sort of viewing players as, as people or assets? No, you got to view them as people. You got to try to connect with them. Um, there definitely is a business aspect to the NBA that you have to prepare players for. But while you're with us, we're going to get to know each other, we're going to have a good time, and we're going to have to try to have a lot of success. Is that the kind of thing that having been a player yourself, maybe you feel prepared to have those tough conversations, you know what it's like to be on the other side of the fence? Yeah, I've been traded several times and amnesty, so you know, I know I know how this stuff, stuff goes. Cal, did you get a chance to talk with Nicola or, or Jamal after Tim stepped down and you stepped into the big chair? If so, what was kind of their reaction to all this? You know, both of them were pretty chill guys. Uh, uh, you know, kind of surprised about Tim a little bit, but understood, you know, had a great opportunity I had to go for, but kind of business as usual. I think both of them are comfortable with, with me and the vision I have for the team. How much importance and how much role do you think you have in establishing and continuing the culture that has been developed here? Yeah, I think it's going to be very important. Um, you know, Tim did such a great job of building it up and Coach Malone and the players that have been here for a long time. And we're going to try to foster the same kind of family friendly atmosphere and uh, make the players comfortable so they can perform at their highest level. How, how, I mean, how ready did you feel? I mean, you learned under Arturis, you learned under Tim, you learned under some guys that are now leading organizations. How, how ready did you feel when, when that call was made? Yeah, I feel ready. Yeah. You know, uh, I've been preparing for this since 2008, 2009 when I played. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge and ready for the, the expectations that are, they'll be laid out in front of us. With you guys at 21, do you look to move up? Do you look to move back? Is everything kind of on the table there with that pick? Thanks That's for an answer for me, Harrison. We'll look to move up. We'll look to move back. We might pick. We might trade it. Exactly. Like, you know, maybe acquire another pick. I, well, I know. didn't say that. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? In terms of your philosophy of team building, how much will you guys rely on the draft versus being aggressive in the trade market and then looking at players who are available? Yeah, I think overall in general, just be more of a trying to identify unique archetypes and uh, you know whether through the draft or free agency or maybe an internationally free free agency like with Faku, um, you know, get guys on our team that we feel like are helping are different or hard to get. You don't want to say pressure, but is there a priority to maximize the window that? Four guys that you've got under contract now, and they're going to have maxed out to Nikola and Jokic in that core that's been established. Take advantage of their prime. Definitely. I mean, we, we talk about Nikola, guy MVP in the league. You're, I'm the steward, uh, along with uh, Josh and Mr. K, of uh, his 
peak years. Like you want to optimize those, you want to take advantage of those. And uh, don't feel the pressure. I'm excited for the opportunity. I want to be able to help him the way he's helped our, our organization and everybody in. Josh said he was willing to go into the luxury tax uh, to get this team to where it needs to be. How, how assuring or reassuring was that for you to know? Yeah, I think that was always a plan. Yeah. I think there's a a myth around the league that we weren't going to want to go into luxury tax, but we've been planning for this for a long time when Tim was here. Um, him and Josh have had extensive conversations about it. Uh, we're prepared to do what we have to do to win. Uh, Calvin, so everyone brought here today was 6-4 or uh, above. Is addressing the perimeter d defense and size a priority in this draft class for you? Yeah, I think that's something we'll look at. Yeah, for sure. In terms of this workout, what was sort of the goal from an organizational standpoint of what you wanted to see out of these guys, and specifically David Roddy, just being that he's a local favorite? Um, just wanted to see them compete. That's what these workouts are about. Show their skill level, show their uh, smarts, and uh, basically see what kind of condition they're in. David, when it comes to David Roddy, you know, we know him intimately. We watched him several times. He's a fantastic player. Um, you know, he's unique, like uh, I mentioned before, he can pass, he can play above the rim, he can score in the post, so, like there's not much he can't do on a basketball court. Uh, so we're excited to have him in and, and to get to take a look at him. How much for you do you determine if you if you want a player, if you want to make a move on a player based on who they are as a person and based on who they are as a basketball player? Yeah, I think character is very important. You know, uh, the teams that are playing right now, uh, for the most part, have uh, certain intangibles that they look for in the players on their team, whether it's toughness or work ethic or even the joy they express for the game. So I think that part of it's almost as important as a physical package. As you watch these NBA playoffs and NBA finals, is there anything that stands out to you as relating to your team and you think maybe, hey, that's something that we should do or we should try? You know, do you see anything and think maybe differently at all? I just, I just think these teams that are consistently playing this time of year will dare to be different. You know, they're, they're willing to take the heat if they make unpopular picks or free agent signings. And uh, they know the end result will will be favorable for them if, if they stick to their plan. I mean, do you guys kind of view yourself as one of those unique teams when you have, I mean, one of the most unique players in basketball? Yeah, I do think risk is minimized significantly when you have somebody like Nikola Jokic and Jamal and, and Michael Porter Jr. Like, uh, so we kind of know the hierarchy. I've been here for several years now. I know what kind of players Coach Malone likes. So like when we identify guys for a player acquisition, um, I think we have uh, reduced the amount of risk significantly by having a hierarchy and, and, having, and knowing who Coach Malone likes. This job can be kind of all-consuming with this role and all the responsibilities you have. What are some non-basketball things that you think keep you centered you know, through all the madness? Yeah, you, you have family, and you, you uh, try to make sure you you spend time with, uh, with your loved ones and, and do that. And, uh, but basically, uh, I'm a basketball junkie. I've always watched basketball, played basketball. Uh, my son is playing basketball right now. You know, So basketball is always a part of what, what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. How much advice do you give Coach Malone about the volleyball world? Uh, well, he has a he has a pretty good volleyball player in his house. It's his wife Jocelyn, so I don't, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what advice I can <laughs> offer. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Good. Thanks, Calvin. Thanks. 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 Congrats, man.